All right, what's up guys? I am back into the pine savannah out on the coastal plain of North Carolina. This is the home of the Venus flytrap, pitcher plants, sundews, all kinds of crazy carnivorous plants, if you will. I like to think of this place as being the savage garden. I've been working in this area for over a month now, and I only have a couple more days left out here before I head back up to Montana. And so I wanted to shoot one last video where I kind of dove into some flash work for you guys. So when it comes to working with flash in the field, the biggest thing you gotta remember is that you're working with two separate exposures at the exact same time. The first one is inside of the camera itself. The second one is in the flash. So we set the exposure in the camera for the ambient light or otherwise for the background. If you want a dark background, you reduce the exposure. If you want a bright background, you increase your exposure in the camera. The camera's exposure is always set for the background of your image. That is the absolute easiest way to think about and remember exactly what you're supposed to do with your camera when you're shooting flash. Now for the flash itself, we set a separate exposure for the subject. And so we've got two ways of going about that, just like in our cameras essentially. There's manual exposure and and there's exposure compensation. Now we're gonna use manual exposure when we're working with a relatively static subject. So if whatever you're photographing is something that you can set up on a tripod, if it's not really moving around, you can take your time, you can work through some of these decisions, then shoot in manual. That is absolutely positively going to be the best way to set our exposure inside of our flash. However, if we are chasing something through the woods, if we're following birds, we're trying to keep up with a little frog that's hopping around in the forest, if the distance of our subject is constantly changing in relationship to the end of our lens, then we absolutely positively need to be in flash exposure compensation or otherwise known as TTL. That's through the lens. And so what's happening in this situation is basically the flash unit itself is communicating with the camera to constantly judge the distance between our lens and the subject. And this makes all the difference in the world because you see, when we get into flash and especially once we start getting into some of the more complicated aspects of it, we actually start dealing with different things in photography that we're not used to talking about, such as the inverse square law of how light falls off across distance, if you will. And so it's just simpler to allow our flash and our camera to make those sort of decisions for us. But like I said, if it's a static subject, there's no reason in the world not to work with manual exposure. Then everything is predictable. Everything is exactly as you set it, nothing's changing, and you can slowly but surely work through all the nuances of the particular type of shot that you're trying to create. Come on out. 